Hello there and uh, welcome back to another video in this notifications in Android tutorial series. Now in this video I'm going to introduce you and show you how you can use a direct reply notification within your application. So for those of you who are not familiar, uh, this is how direct reply actually looks like within our notification. So it will allow us to basically uh, display this uh, text field in order to reply to this notification directly. And now let me show you how will this actually work with our notification. So let's trigger here this notification. And whenever we trigger that, uh, by default, uh, I have specified here uh, one uh, custom message that will appear. Now, if I click here this reply button, uh, then a new UI will show up. And that UI is actually called direct reply. So here we can type here our own message, for example, hello. And when I press this uh, send button, then that message will be sent to our broadcast receiver and from there we can parse that message however we want. Okay, so uh, here I'm using the same project uh, from the previous videos uh, in this uh, series. Only this time I have created here a new branch which is called the direct reply. And uh, this is our notification module uh, which we are going to modify in order to construct uh, our direct reply uh, notification. Now let me here first open up this official documentation about uh, Android notifications. So, so for those of you who are not familiar, a uh, direct reply action uh, is actually introduced with uh, an Android 7.0 or an API level of 24, which allows the users to enter the text directly into the notification, which is delivered to your application without uh, opening an activity. So this direct reply action uh, actually appears as a regular action button and whenever we press that uh, action button then this uh, new UI will show up and there we can enter our message and click this uh, send button. So that's exactly what uh, we are going to do and based on which device uh, you are actually using this uh, notification UI uh, may be a little different. So let's get back to our project and the first uh, thing which I want to do here, uh, I'm going to open up this notification module and inside our first function here, I'm going to create a remote uh, input variable so that I can call here remote uh, input uh, class, so this one, then a builder and in this builder I need to pass this result key which is basically one uh, string key that uh, will be used to pass this uh, remote input to our broadcast receiver. So let's create here just a simple uh, constant, uh, for example, result uh, key, which will have a value of a result key. Now let's specify this uh, constant right there, there you go. And on top of this builder we can call uh, different functions, like for example a set label, so we can specify the label of our uh, actual uh, direct reply uh, UI. So this is the actual label that we need to uh, specify here for our notification. I'm going to here type uh, type uh, here in three dots, there we go, and we can call here build. Okay, there we go, so that's our actual uh, remote uh, input. Uh, next I'm going to create here a, uh, a reply intent. Here I'm going to call the intent class, and then I'm going to specify the context as a first parameter, and our broadcast receiver as a second parameter. So our broadcast receiver is for now empty, there we go. Uh, now let me just go down below. I'm going to now create a reply uh, pending intent. And here I'm going to call a pending intent dot get broadcast function. So here just specify the context as a first parameter. Uh, as a second parameter we need to pass the exact uh, request code. For now I'm going to specify number one. The third parameter is the actual uh, intent, so reply intent. And the fourth parameter is the actual flag. And for now I'm going to just uh, paste here uh, some code. So, so this is the actual flag which we're going to pass here as a parameter to this uh, get broadcast function. So if you're using an API which is greater than uh, 31 or equal to 31, uh, then we need to use here this uh, pending intent uh, flag mutable. So in the previous uh, videos in this series we have used the immutable uh, flag. However, if you want to use this direct replay functionality of a notification, uh, then you need to change this flag to be a mutable. Otherwise it will not work. Okay, so down below we have uh, our actual notification builder. And I can actually remove this uh, set auto cancel uh, function. We don't need it at this point. Uh, here I have specified this uh, set only alert to once function, which basically means that uh, our notification will trigger the sound and the vibration only the first time we show this notification. 
And now here I'm going to specify also uh, the style of our notification. So here I'm going to use one a custom style, which is called a messaging style. So for that I'm going to create here a one a new variable, notification style. And here I'm going to call notification compet dot messaging style. So this messaging style, as you can see, accepts uh, one parameter, and that is the actual user that uh, will be displayed into this uh, new messaging style notification. So let's create here that uh, person object. I'm going to create here a new variable. So, so just import this uh, person android x core dot app. There we go. So uh, this is the actual person object. So uh, its name for now uh, will be Johnny. But we can also specify some other properties, like for example, the actual icon of our uh, user or a person, the importance, the actual key, which will be used to distinguish multiple different uh, persons or users within our uh, messaging style notification. Uh, for now, I'm going to just uh, use the actual name for our person, and we can pass that object right here. So now, uh, by default, uh, I also want to specify here uh, uh, one a message that will be displayed by default whenever we trigger this notification. So I'm going to call here add message function and there I'm going to pass a couple of different parameters. So the first parameter here is the actual text, uh, the second parameter is uh, basically a timestamp and the third parameter is the actual person under which this uh, message uh, will be shown. And now I can pass this notification style uh, right here. Also, uh, one more property or function which we need to call is uh, add action, and here we need to call a reply action, which is the variable that I'm going to create right now. Okay, so this is our actual uh, reply action, and here we have called this uh, action builder, and we have specified uh, all those parameters, like the actual icon, so for now we are not going to use any icon for our action, uh, the uh, action title will be a reply, and we have specified here the actual uh, pen intent, which will be triggered whenever we press our action button. Now, on top of this uh, notification action button, we have called this uh, add remote input function, and we have specified our remote input, which will be shown whenever we, of course, uh, press our action button. And for now, I think that we have everything we need to actually uh, proceed with our actual uh, broadcast receiver. So let's open up our my receiver. Now in this uh, broadcast receiver, uh, we are going to use uh, our actual uh, notification compet builder and uh, our notification manager compet. So how can we actually inject those two types uh, within our broadcast receiver? So first we need to annotate our actual receiver with an Android entry point. And we are not going to use here a constructor injection, instead we are going to use a field injection. So down below I'm going to just paste here uh, two lines of code, so let me just uh, import those uh, inject annotations and uh, those uh, types here as well. There we go. So basically with this uh, we have uh, injected those uh, two types using a field injection. And now in our onReceive function I'm going to also paste some code and then I'm going to explain. And uh, in our onReceive function as you can see the first uh, thing which we did we have created here one variable a remote input. And there we have called the get result from intent function from our remote input and we have passed this intent. Now this remote input variable uh, will basically contain uh, that uh, input value that we have specified within our direct reply text field right here, okay? And whenever we press this send button, uh, we will be able to pass that value directly to our broadcast receiver. And there, of course, we are extracting that value by passing this exact same key that we have specified within our notification module here as well. And below that here I have also uh, constructed the one person object, so that I can show you here how we can display another uh, a message within our notification. So we have uh, constructed here a new person, and we are basically adding a new message to our notification by using that uh, message text that we have received from our remote input. And after that of course we are calling this notify function and we are passing this uh, new notification style. Let me just remove this uh, second notification uh, set style function, ok. And now I'm going to run this application and we are going to see how will this uh, actually work. So let's uh, trigger our notification by triggering this um, uh, simple notification. There we go, so whenever we trigger this notification, uh, this is the actual UI which we are going to see. So, 
As you can see, we're using here a message style for our notification, which means that we can display here this uh, person uh, image or icon, this uh, person uh, name, and the actual message. So we have specified those values right here in our uh, notification module. So there we go. This is the actual person, so Johnny. This is the actual message, so hi there. Pretty much the same thing that we can see right here. And of course, you don't have to specify uh, those uh, uh, messages in the person uh, objects directly when you're creating this notification component builder. But I have specified that uh, just to showcase how will this actually work. And now as you can see, whenever I press this uh, reply action button that we have created, uh, then this uh, new UI will appear where we are going to see this uh, type here message that we have specified here as a label of our remote uh, input. And here we can type our own message, for example, uh, hello. And whenever I press this uh, send button, uh, then a new message here uh, will appear. And that message is actually constructed within our broadcast receiver. Okay, so here in this case, the name is uh, me, which is referring to the current user that, that actually sent this uh, message. However, uh, if you don't uh, actually uh, call this uh, notify or a cancel function uh, whenever you trigger this uh, broadcast receiver, uh, then let me show you uh, what kind of a bug uh, you may encounter. So let me just trigger this notification. Let's uh, click reply, let's type something and click send. So now in this case, you're going to see here this uh, infinite uh, loading uh, uh, progress, which will mean that uh, you need to actually specify this uh, either notify or a cancel function so you can proceed and uh, basically uh, hide this uh, progress bar. And of course, we can modify this example. And for example, I can specify here uh, set uh, style equal to null. So we can remove this uh, messaging style notification. And I can, for example, specify here the actual title, which will say uh, sent. So this is just an example, of course. Let me just run this uh, one more time. Trigger this notification. Let's uh, type here something, hello, and click this uh, send button. So now this notification will change and we're going to change its title to send. Okay, so now you have seen uh, one basic example of uh, how you can use a direct reply uh, notification within your application. So it's uh, quite easy and you can of course explore uh, some of uh, its uh, functionalities uh, further more by yourself. And also uh, this uh, whole project uh, will be available for you to download from my uh, GitHub repository. So be sure to open this direct reply branch of this repository. If you want to check this uh, source code of course. So uh, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video if you find it uh, helpful of course. And uh, see you next one.